Oh, I thought I heard the old man say, Leave her, Johnny, leave her. It's a Blockade runners accounted for 60% of the Confederate arms, a third of the lead for bullets, ingredients for 75% of the gunpowder, nearly all the paper for cartridges, the majority of cloth and leather for uniforms and accoutrements. But it was dangerous duty. Petty Officer James F. Taylor on the A.D. Vance. A bullet, gentlemen, has a path called the line of trajectory. All you have to do is to stand to the left or right of that line. The new Confederate States of America did not have the industrial base to support itself for the coming war, nor did they have a large enough merchant fleet to import adequate war supplies. The South looked to Great Britain for vessels and supplies. The British saw the opportunity for immense profits supplying goods to the new nation from the sea. The blockade of southern ports caused a revolution in shipbuilding. Steel hulled, shallow drafted, fast steamers carrying large cargoes past the Union ships, arriving from Bermuda, Nassau, and Havana, mostly in the darkness. The Mobile, Alabama seaport's importance increased as it became the only major Confederate Gulf port left unsecured by Union ships. My name is Creighton Forsman, commonly known as Pico, uh, and uh, I'm the builder of this model of the heroine. Blockade runners, or cargo ships, were the lifeblood of the Confederacy. They transported all sorts of necessary goods, from weapons to stationery. In 1864, there were 22 attempts made by blockade runners to enter Mobile Bay. 19 were successful. The heroine was one of those steamers. Without the blockade runners, the Confederacy could not have properly armed, clothed, or fed its soldiers. As long as the ports were open for the steamers, the South survived. Once the sea ports were captured, the Southern nation would be destined to die. Yes, it's time.